Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious Well, welcome to you, and glad you could join us at Belmoral for a time of uh, reflection and I hope encouragement to you. The uh, and uh, we'll maybe start then with a uh, word of prayer together. Let's pray, dear Lord. We want to praise you for your goodness, that you've been faithful, and and for your forgiveness the kindness you've shown to us in caring for and supplying our need. Lord, you've given us the example in Jesus, and we thank you for the gift of your spirit, and your word, and your power. Lord, we need to thank you that uh, you've reached out to us as ordinary and flawed people, and invited us into your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for the encouragement day to day and, and the purpose that gives us meaning to uh, go on. We thank you for the opportunities you give us around to uh, be able to reach out to others and to uh, share your love. Lord, we come to you needing your forgiveness. Lord, at times we make this all about us and uh, we forget that this is really your world and your kingdom. Help us to have hearts of gratitude and be glad for our place that we can be in service to you. Lord, 
I would ask that you would be especially close to the lonely and the isolated. Lord, that they uh, would have your presence. For the fearful and the discouraged, Lord, that uh, they would find courage in trusting you. Lord, that there would be hope and meaning and connection. Lord, for those that grieve, that they not be alone in their pain and that they be comforted. Lord, for those who are confused by the time and uncertain about what direction to take, Lord, I would ask that you would help them find your peace. Lord, I would ask that you would empower us to live lives in your service and prepare us now to receive from you and your word, Lord, that we might be encouraged to walk in a way that honors you in Jesus' name and by his power. Amen. Well, I was asked to do a little bit of an introduction. See, we finished the uh, one series that we have been doing for some months uh, on the songs and benedictions uh, of Scripture, prayers. And uh, we're returning to a look at uh, the book of 2 Corinthians. We were partway into that when pandemic struck and things changed. Well, I've always been kind of drawn to Paul's letters to the Corinthians. When I reflect on it, I believe it's because Corinthians is written to ordinary people. Very average, plain. They weren't the most clever. They didn't have celebrity star power. They weren't especially noble or noteworthy. And they were quite flawed. In fact, the record indicates they made a lot of mistakes. They had a past. And they had a lot of regrets. Uh, they had their share of scandals and shame. Uh, they had some pretty messed up families. And they had some bad habits. Uh, and they asked some pretty foolish questions as well. Uh, they... Uh, they weren't going to pick up a lot of outstanding merit awards. Uh, in fact, they would have probably preferred to have kept their names out of the paper. I suppose those are some of the reasons I'm kind of drawn to them. You see, I can kind of identify with ordinary people and flawed people. Uh, I can see the ways in which I don't measure up and the ways in which um, I'm not going to be uh, put in any of those top 10 categories. You see, they may have wondered who would want them. They no doubt questioned whether they were good enough, good enough to be anybody's pick, even though we all long to be wanted and valued, and included. Wouldn't you like to be somebody's first pick? Chosen, loved, forgiven, and with a bright new future. Well, that's what the Corinthian letters tell us all about. It tells us that it's not that we would have to be good enough to be chosen, but that we have been chosen. We've been chosen because of the one who is supremely good. We've been chosen by a God who loves us so much, so much that he spared no cost to name us as his own. He's a redeemer. You see, a redeemer is one who sees the value others don't and chooses and breathes life into what someone else might have thrown away. 
He sees the ordinary, even the broken human beings that have chosen to live lives and frankly, that dishonor him. And he risks everything. He suffers and carries our shame so that we wouldn't be lost. You see, he takes what's ordinary and transforms it into what is extraordinary. I wonder how many of you are collectors. What do you collect? You know, people collect all kinds of things, you know, from, you know, spoons to uh, uh, rocks. Uh, People collect all these things. Well, it turns out God's a collector too. You see, he collects ordinary and broken lives. And then he pours his life into them and makes their life new. It's in the vessels of those lives that he places the treasure of his spirit. You see, it describes it in the Corinthian letter as it's almost as though we were so many old clay pots just this week in the news uh, they uncovered more clay pots in, in a spot in Egypt uh, than they've ever seen in one's place before. And they've, uh, and all of these, all of these pots um, could have been scattered and just left and abandoned as they were. But you see, God sees value in these vessels that he calls our lives. And uh, he, he's not about to throw them away, even though they may be rather cracked and broken. He sees a potential for beauty. Well, my wife spends some time on Pinterest, and they're often taking things that I think look like junk and, uh, and then doing various things to, uh, to, to make them look like something you'd want in your house. Well, Turns out God's way better at it than Pinterest. You see, he fills those clay jars of ordinary people with his light, his love, his hope, and his power. If we'll accept the gift that he offers, he invites us to come as we are, but he doesn't leave us there. He transforms us into something much more than we could ever imagine. The passage I really want us to zero in on is in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and starting at verse 17. I'll be going through that, and if you can follow in your Bible, and then I will just sort of throw in some extra commentary that uh, addresses it phrase by phrase. So here's how it starts. If anyone is in Christ, in Christ, you see what he's offering us there is a new identity, a new name, a new mission. If we are in Christ, he is a new creation. It's a fresh start, a new life, empowered by God's spirit, alive to love. And then it says, the old has gone. You see, there was an old dead-end way of trying harder, making up for your mistakes. This, the I would have, I should have, I could have cycle of shame where we're never good enough. That's all gone. That's the old way. But the new way has come. Our Redeemer has breathed new life into dry bones. As those who receive the gift of God's love, we have grace to pass along to others. All this from God who reconciles himself through Christ. He reaches out to include us. And he gave us the ministry of reconciliation to rebuild relationships to reach out to those who feel alone, not good enough, unwanted, alienated. There's a whole world out there that is living in existence as though they were in a refugee camp 
and needs to know that they can come home and they would be welcome. You see that God is reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. He made the way that we could be forgiven, that the debt could be paid so that we would be free to return. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Just as we could be welcomed into the Father's love, he sends us to invite others to receive his gift of belonging, of being wanted. We are therefore, it says, Christ's ambassadors. (laughs) We went from being ordinary and even maybe a little substandard to being God's special representatives. That's what an ambassador is. We've been given the opportunity to share the love and hope we've received. Made me think about a story that was in the news recently about displaced Canadian families those who had been associated with the, uh, the ISIS troops, uh, the ISIS troops that had fallen, and their families left waiting in refugee camps in Syria. People without a home. People who don't feel wanted anywhere. We were told that the diplomats from Canada considered it too dangerous to enter the area to escort a child back to their Canadian family. Thankfully, there was a diplomat from U.S. that stepped up. We're being asked to be ambassadors, motivated by love, that we would reach out to those who need to know they are wanted by God as though it says God were making his appeal through us. Imagine the world getting to know God's love because they can see it reflected in us. That's extraordinary. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 puts it this way. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts. We were ordinary, but he, our redeemer, is in this grand process of transforming us to be so much more. He is our Lord, and he does not see just who we wear, but he mostly sees who we're becoming. That's why Paul writes to the Philippians and said, He who has begun a good work in you will see it to completion. Extraordinary. All the way my Savior leads Who have I to ask how could I doubt its tender mercy who through life has been my God all the way my Savior leads me cheers each wanting path I tread me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread, you lead me and keep me from fall, you carry me close to your heart, and show All the way 
spirit clothed in mortal Wings its flight to realms of day This my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way Jesus led me all the way
grace beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turned his face away as wounds which mother chose Perhaps some questions that you can consider today after reflecting on what Corinthians has to tell us. When do you have a hard time believing that you have been chosen by God? How will you remind yourself it's really true? Which of his treasures has the Lord been pouring into your life lately? Is there a gift you would like to make more room for? And finally, where do you see your opportunity to be the Lord's ambassador? Perhaps we can end our time today with a benediction taken from the end of the Corinthian letter. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Go in peace.